meeting of the water commissioners Thursday, April 6, 2023 is called to order at 6 p.m. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, Chairman Ed Johnson present. Dave Meswell, Commissioner present. John Kane, Commissioner present. Randy Brown, DPW Director present. Christy Maya, DPW Office Manager present. Is there any public comment? Is there any public comment? Okay, seeing none. John Dave, have you reviewed the February 2nd, 2023 commissioner's meeting minutes? I have to make a motion to accept the minutes for February 2nd. All second. Yes. John Dave, second the motion to accept the minutes I've written. Okay. All in favor? Aye. That's what I. John Kane, aye. Yes. And Johnson, aye. Okay, we got two elderly rate applications. Uh, they all meet the criteria. Patrick Smith at 70 Berkshire Avenue and Ronald Hershey at 228 South Long Air. They all meet the criteria. I have a motion on the floor. I'll make a motion to accept the two elderly rate applications. I'll second the motion to accept the two elderly rate applications. All in favor? Ed Johnson, aye. Well, aye. John Kane, aye. Okay. Here. Okay. Randy, DPW Director's Report. Okay, first item is our update on our uh, water withdrawal permit uh, and the water needs survey. We talked about this the last few meetings. There really has not been any update on this. DCR is still working on the water needs forecast. Um, there was some movement on this in the November, December, maybe early January timeframe, but really not much since. Um, so I, I do know there is a draft or a closer draft that was complete. I think I'm just waiting for the final draft to come to us for review. Uh, the next item is, uh, this commercial subdivision at 686 college highway. Uh, this is in front of the planning board. The applicant submitted a, an application probably, um, six weeks ago, I'm going to say. Um, there's been one or two hearings since the planning board. I dismissed some comments on it, but the public hearing is still open. So I'll let you know how that goes as that plays out. Item three, the annual statistical report. So Kristen and Kevin did a great job. Kevin did a great job um, finalizing that report. And some of the key metrics that we look at each year are unaccounted for water and residential gallons per capita day. So we are at 74 residential gallons per capita day. That's an increase of 80 from last year. Um, still doesn't quite hit NASDAQ's goal right. of 65 gallons per day, right. but uh, certainly better than 80. And then the year before, we were at 90. 2020, we're at 90. And that's, I think, probably partly COVID spike, even more right. 21, probably right. partly COVID. A lot of people at home. Yeah. Yeah. So, and a lot of water systems experience that in those two years. So, 74 is actually pretty kind of in line with pre-COVID numbers. And unaccounted for water is 9%. That is below DEP standard of 10%. Uh, last year we were at 1%. Um, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the issue was, but 9% has kind of been where we've been at the last few years is right around nine. So that's the way the numbers came out this year is at nine. So that's, that's fine. Uh, Christy finalized the consumer comps report. That's gonna be published next week uh in the westfield news i think right and we also post that at various locations right. downtown town hall the library um it'll go to the post office, post office the apartment complex um so our, and there's a copy of it on the next page in your in your packet it's a full page so that shows everything that we need to do uh for all the activities and reporting and testing we did last year Item five, we did submit another round of public notifications to water users regarding the first quarter samples for halocytic acids. Uh, those samples were taken on Jane, uh, February 14th. Um, so this was another, this is I think the fifth public notice we've had to send uh, the last five quarters. The, the good news is that uh, the results from last quarter were the best we've seen in a year and a half, in a year and a half. And if we get those same results the next quarter, we will not be in violation. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll take those results in May. Good, good. Again, not much we can do. It's 
you know, water from the Springfield right. water system. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's we're kind of a lot of hands out of our control. Um, but um, that is getting a little better. Item six, there was a draft regulations for PFAS that was put out by EPA. And it's different than mass DEP's current regulations. So mass DEP's regulations are currently 20 parts per trillion, for, which is a combination of the six PFAS compounds. And EPA's regulation breaks each compound down individually, at least, at least those six compounds individually. And they have a max panel level for, a, this is all draft right now, but four parts per trillion for PFOA and PFOS. And then the other four compounds are, there's a, there's a formula which determines what's called, they're calling a hazard index. And it's, it's basically, if this formula exceeds one, then it's, it's a violation. So this is still in draft format. There's a, a lot to be analyzed here. I was on a call with some folks at MassDP a week ago. There are more calls with various agencies for the next coming coming weeks. So I'll be keeping a tune on those. I will say that I looked at our last couple rounds of results. And if these uh, regulations hold at those current uh, standards, I, I don't think we would trip the threshold. Um, PFO and PFOS, those are easy to calculate. We've been below four parts per trillion for all of our samples for both of those compounds. And then the hazard index, it's, it's based on a kind of a complex formula, but I think, again, we're, we're okay. So as long as if those standards stay the same, we're gonna be okay. Uh, Mass DP will have to adopt their own standards. Once EPA administers theirs, DP will have to adopt their own, which is at least as strict as EPA. So DP could go lower than those those thresholds. Um, there was I asked a question to DP last week with you know any indication whether they're going to do that or not, and they say it's too early to determine. They still want to let the process play off the EPA. So we'll see how that we'll keep an eye on that. Item seven, kind of sad news here. Uh, Emil Pustia, he's been doing our backhoe inspections for I would say at least five or six years now. Yeah, did a really nice job for us. He gave us notice about a month, a uh, month and a half ago, that he cannot do inspections anymore. He is uh, getting out of the business and he's moving out of the area. So we uh, were in a little bit of a uh, search mode. We did find an individual who was willing to take on our back home inspections. His name is Jeff Vito Belli. He currently works for Springfield Water and Sewer, and he does back home inspections for them as his full time position. And he's willing to do it for us as a, as a part time gig. So Christy, Kevin, and I met with Jeff uh, a few days ago, and uh, he's uh, got all the information he needs. He's got insurance, and uh, he's ready to go. So he has a list, and I think we're all set on all of our ends where you can start that process anytime. So he plans on doing starting starting inspections late in sometime later this month. Oh, good. So we were, we were lucky to find someone pretty quick to take on that role. Water bills. Christy uh, put a lot of effort into our water bills the last two weeks uh, and over last weekend as well. And those bills were, our ice and iron are done. They're in the first office hands now and uh, they're gonna be issued on uh, April 17th, due date of May 18th. So bills are out the door, we'll be out the door soon. And the last item is uh, so Chrissy and I have had some meetings with our consultant who works with us on our water meter reading system. And every year it's, it's, uh, Chrissy puts a lot of time into trying to identify who is violating the water restrictions. And it's a lot of it's, it's kind of like looking at each individual account one at a time and looking at their usage. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's very, very time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we're looking into ways where that effort can be done, at least partially through the, the programming. Um, Okay. We've had some meetings. It's still a little bit not. It's not quite there yet. Um, but uh, that'd be they're, great. They're looking at it. Yeah, it's not going to be a perfect system. We know that. But at least if they can, if we can get something narrowed down, or instead of looking at every account every or maybe account, hundred right. accounts, we can look at down yeah. twenty accounts, and it'd be, it would it help us. If she still has right normal stuff to do with it. Yeah, yeah. we still yeah. put yeah. her behind. Yeah, yeah. put yeah. her behind. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're looking. Uh, we're looking into that. Hey. Yeah. And any work orders? Yep. There are a few work orders on the work table. Yeah. 
Appointments we got none. Uh, old business, Wally Park, Spring Park. So at our last meeting, we had two representatives from Park and Rec attend the water meeting and explain their proposal in a little more detail. There was still some details lacking, and uh, they agreed at that meeting they would come back to us with some more information. We haven't seen anyone. No, so no, nothing up right there. Although I, I do know that after that water meeting, they did approach the CPC and they asked for an increase in their request. I think they asked for $30,000 more, but really no details were given what that was for. <clears throat> Isn't that supposed to go to a vote at the town meeting? meeting? Yeah. The, for the CPC vote. Yeah. Is for, for community preservation funds. Yeah. That's a town meeting article. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So I will ask again, I meant to ask uh, early this week and I just got tied up with other things, but I will follow up with Park and Rec and ask them for that information they, they promised us at our last meeting. Yep. Okay, good. Hank and property. So I had a meeting with um, the family or a couple of representatives of the family about two or three weeks ago. And uh, so there's, they're still very interested in breaking off some of the property just to sell to the town. I remember they have, um, it's a large lot, I think a 20 or 30 acre lot. It's got some, like a, a sliver frontage off Lexington Circle. And then the back is all where there's there's some dry land, but there's also a lot of wetlands in the, in the way back of the property. And the family's looking to sell that um, and divvy up the assets among the, the heirs of, of George Hinkin. So the, the property, I, met, I talked to with the, um, I guess the representative was speaking about the family and I explained what our position was that we would be willing to talk with them about it. Um, I don't think we'd be able to purchase a whole property. I think they want to get some value out of it. And the value is really is a frontage off Lexington Circle. That's probably too rich for what we can afford, but if they can break off that front piece and then sell the back piece to the town or our water department, I think we could we could work with that. There are some grant funds out there available through um, Drinking water protection, drinking water supply protection grants. We've used those in the past. Yep. And uh, I think that'd be good, good avenue for us to pursue. So we're gonna still continue discussions with the Hankin family. Uh, after my meeting with the representative, they would get, he was gonna talk to the rest of the family to talk about what we were talking about and see if that was still something they were willing to, to undertake. So nothing new to report there, but you know, there's um open dialogue on both sides. We're gonna okay. get into the discussion. Good. 2024 budget. So a few weeks ago, Ed, you and I were at the budget hearing with yeah. the finance committee and select board. We yeah. went through all the budget items. I don't think there were many questions no. based on the budget. There were questions about water restrictions and other that things. Was, that, that, that comes up every that, year. That come up, but and they came up again. The budget. Um, so I, our budget submitted. I don't think there'll be many changes to it once it's submitted. No, they didn't, they didn't have any questions really. They're either going through their reconciliation meetings over the next couple of weeks, okay. the two boards, yeah. and then they'll they'll spit out the, the budget that'll be yeah. more than I don't I don't foresee any problems. No. Okay. New business water service inventory and mud service line replacement plan. So this is a a new a new item we haven't talked about. So there's a new regulation from DEP for every water system to undertake a water service inventory. And really the, the target is to identify any lead services in the water system. And this came about, if you remember probably four years ago, three, four years ago, there were issues in Flint, Michigan. Right. Uh, a lot of lead getting in the drinking water and and, and um, causing a lot of a lot of havoc. So this is DEP's response to it is they're requiring every every system to take a do this inventory and then identify where lead services are. Talking to Kevin and the guys here, we're unaware of any lead services anywhere in town. We haven't seen every 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 service, obviously, but there's there are none that we are aware of. But it's not as simple as saying there are none out there. We got to do our full due diligence, go through each water service card. If there are unknowns, uh, the way the regulation is written is that you have to assume that it could be lead, and it may require some follow up, whether that's uh, like a uh, in basement a basement inspection. 
there are things you can do like uh, vacuum inspections where you dig down and just locate the service line in in the in the uh, grass area in the yard um, or, or, or other avenues. So we have to go through this process. There is a timeline on it, uh, but the good news is there's some grant money available for consultants to do bulk of this work for us. So what I'm asking you today to do is to vote to accept to apply for a grant through the uh, mass, I think it's a clean water trust. And that that's one of the steps of the process. This is kind of, I'd say more of a, a housekeeping item, if anything. Um, we need to have this vote to, to apply. I'm also asking the select board to do the same vote at the next meeting on Monday. So I think the select board are the only board that can actually accept a grant on behalf of the town. So the select board will be voting to accept this grant on behalf of the water department, the water commission. So if you're okay with that, um, all I need from you is a, is a motion and a vote to accept the grant. There's nothing you need to sign. There are some papers in the back here. It's a third, the last two pages of your documents called the authority to file and certifying authority to file. This is, these are two papers that will be submitted to the um, green agency with the application. And I don't, I don't even have uh, dollars how much the grant's gonna, what we're asking for yet. I just wanna get this out of the way so we can move forward. It, it, it is, um, it's a as, first on first serve basis for the grant too. So the first, the sooner you get the grant in, um, the quicker the funds are available. And at some point the, the funds will run out. Okay, I have a motion on the floor apply for that grant. I make a motion to apply for a grant for the clean water. Lead, lead, water service inventory and lead line service line replacement plan. Okay, I have a second. I have a second that motion. Okay. All in favor, Ed Johnson, aye. Dave Mitchell, aye. John Kane, aye. And the motion carries. <clears throat> Thank you. Anything else? I'm in new business, Randy. Nothing for me, no. Is there anything else to come before the board? Stephen Lincoln, I have a motion for adjournment. Make a motion to adjourn. I'll second a motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Ted Johnson? Steve Nesmore, aye. John Kane, aye. Meeting is closed. <laughs>